Disciple of Bolas and Lash Rithe. Not very powerful. Or even just drops Messenger. I mean, Messenger's a fine dude to sack to your... Lash Rithe and Vampire Nighthawk. Or Worm Coil Engine, too. I'm actually sad that new Liliana is not in here. We uh, have a couple of Liliana the Veil. But yeah, I'm... but he's just keeping it clean. He, he, that's what he really wants to do, you know? Well, you can only play so many four drops. I say play all of the four drops. He's already playing 10. No, you can play more. Play, play 30. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then 26 land and 4 sphere. So we're seeing a reenactment of Jerry versus Brad. <laughs> with uh, on the left Jerry playing mono black control versus on the right the 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 villain Brad Nelson with blue white delver. Looks like this list has a little bit more removal than that other list did. Yeah, this is definitely tuned like a guy who's been playing some mono black recently. Like he means <laughs> it. He's serious about it and he's not just going to play with some cute cards. This is really what he's doing. You know, he's got a straight face. Yep. We're supposed to believe him. Sign in blood instead of Nile Spellbomb. Um, I like it. An actual curve to his removal. Four slip, two go for the throat, two gets verdict, um, and then two Liliana, three mutilate. And a Karn. I yeah. like it. I like the Vampire Nighthawks too. The Nighthawk Lash Rite combo, so good. And I mean, Nighthawk can run into an angel. Yep. A lot of creatures cannot run into an angel. A Nighthawk, it'll die, but it'll take somebody with it. Yeah. So Costa stockpiling Mana Weeks. What do you think about these decks not playing any caverns? I mean, obviously he's got Lash Rides, and that's the reason. But And Mutilate, too. But, like, would one cavern really be that? I think one or two caverns would be fine. I mean, just being able to do something like this and say, you know what? This Disciple of Bolas resolves. It resolves. Probably, yeah. Yeah, particularly if he sticks something else first where he can actually just get full value out of it. Like, yeah. that can just win the game. Yeah, I mean, I have drawn a lot of cards in my time. And if you can do it uncounterably, that just seems really devastating to a it's lot of these definitely better than doing it counterably. <laughs> right? Hey, look at this. You countered it. Okay, and is it going to be leaked? Look at that. <laughs> I'm willing to make my Mutilate not be perfect. It's like... Uh, I have played a lot of decks with Vidalcan Shackles, where my Shackles have a lot of non-Shackle lands in them. And you know what? It usually doesn't matter. If you had any idea how many times I've tapped three Grove of the Burn Wells to cast a Vidalcan Shackles with black cards in my hand. Right? <laughs> and the thing is, is yes, you're not optimal with your Shackles. But you know what? Your deck is probably just fine. And it might be a better deck than the deck that's optimal with Shackles. And we see a Mutagenic Growth quasi-counter a Tragic Slip there on... Uh, Tiago Chan, the Snapcaster Mage. This wasn't during the attack phase, was it? Oh, yes. That's embarrassing. That's why, dude, you can't be so cute with it. You gotta be... Besides, what if it was a Restoration Angel? Yep. End of your turn, Itis kills. Nah. Yeah. And there is an Angel in hand. You just held back with it. Nah. Not all cards should be played at instant speed just because they can. Yep. Other, once you start playing everything at instant speed then it's like you're back to sorcery speed because there's only one time you're playing your cards. The instant, the nice thing is you have the option. All right, so James Gerbeck, Mono Black Control, up to six mana. Still gonna have to fight through a lot of uh, Mana Leaks and Angels. There's the Metamorph, Metamorph with Mana Leak Mana. And we're gonna see a slip come here, I think. And yep. it's gonna be stymied by a Restoration Angel, most likely. Oh, he uh, passes. Oh, nope, nope. Okay. If it's not at a verdict, then it's not going to do that much work. Okay, sign in blood. I like it. I like that better. I like it. Are we going to see a mana leak, you think? Or an angel? Because the angel can put a lot of pressure on him. I think we're going to see an angel. What would be real nice is if he's so tilted from the tragic slip not working that he tries to do it now. All right. Boink. And now we've got a clock on the table. Two turns for um, James Gerbic to be vanquished by Matt Costa. One ah, of, one single of the, mutilate is all it takes. Yeah, one of the dangers of playing a deck like James is if you're on the back foot and your opponent has actual counter magic, oh, that's rough too. You can just be taken out. 
Rune Changer's playing very hard for straight mono black. He doesn't even have access to Ratchet Bomb in his main deck. So uh, pretty much every threat from here on out is lethal. But it could be worse. It could be a Sword of Feast and Famine. Oh boy! And Matt Costa has the Thought Scour to win versus James Gerbic. There, he targets himself, makes his Rune Changer spike more than enough for Matt Costa's Angel to kill James Gerbic with Mono Black Control. Now you have to imagine that if James has put some work in here, and it looks like his list is is a list that has been honed, you have to imagine that he has most prepared for a Delver opponent. So looking at his sideboard, I see Doomblade, I see Ratchet Bomb, I see Mutilate. All cards that I would see as very valuable cards there. I also see Surgical Extraction. Some people like Surgical Extraction versus Delver. I am not one of those The fact people. that he's got it in his board, he's probably the type. Like if you just wanted it for the uh, Reanimator matchup, you'd play Nile Spellbomb and be happy about it. Probably. I think that one of the things about surgical extraction that tricks people is they think what they're doing is they're they're getting you when they well, take they are care getting of, you when they take care but of that it snapcaster mage i yeah, mean it's like <laughs> get you can get you can get them gotten but at what cost yeah you know? well what did you get right you got to be even on them rather than down on them well no you're still down you traded a card for their card but they still have a two yeah 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 you're still down yep. yeah and you're down i mean it's just is it important you know, like, is that the key battle? Because, like, Force of Willing a card, if you're using your Surgical as a zero mana Force of Will, that's, then it's worth it, under the right circumstances, as long as you're countering a spell that is worth the being down on, you know? I mean, let's pretend that your deck is just dead to one card from, uh, from Delver. Okay, fine. I, 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 would, I would have less problem with it in that, you know, you could perhaps strip this it from their hand. This surprises me. You're a guy who just main deck extirpates more than most. <laughs> I've only main deck extirpated uh, once. Which is much no, no, more than most. No, twice, twice, twice. Same deck, though, same deck, though. That was a good deck. <laughs> so, Matt Costa, up 1-0 to zero yeah. versus well, James. I mean, I'm a huge fan of that style of effect when it's reasonable, but I don't think it's a reasonable way to fight against Snapcaster Mages. But Snapcaster Mage is not a reasonable card. In this day and age, there, you have to be willing to not be reasonable. Here we have uh, Matt Costa on the right, up one game to zero. What's and he got in the board coming he's in? He's got Celestial Purge, um, access nice to it, Oblivion Ring, yeah. which might as well say Vindicate. Um, well, hitting the Swamp, I think, is pretty good here, too. But. Fair, fair. Um, dissipate if he wants it, and Negate if he wants it. I think Negate's too good not to. He already saw Sign and Blood, and the fact that he saw Nighthawk in all swamps, he's got to think that Last Ride is an option. I mean, one of the things... Dissipate is for sure oh, yeah. gold. One of the things I think about when I see an opponent with all black spells, I do think Lash Rife is just so reasonable to expect. Do you think he brings in Dismember? He already saw Nighthawk. And it's possible you could have Obliterator. Like, you can never tell. As soon as somebody sits down against you with a mono black deck, you got a, the amount of range that person could have. Like, people who play mono black are capable of anything. <laughs> Seriously, they, they might have Fexian you know, Rager. Who the hell knows? Well, and you've got to Mimic careful, that? Right? Why not? You know, and Mimic that, that's actually a very reasonable card in this, in this current all, meta game. All these cards are. I yeah. mean, mono black people are crazy. Like, they're, they're like foaming at the mouth. It's like um, you gotta, you gotta, you got to respect them much the same way that you can't just, you know, if you come up upon some dynamite in the middle of the sidewalk, you don't just start playing hopscotch over it. <laughs> you have to respect that it is dynamite. It could explode. Same way with mono black. <laughs> James Gerbic on the left with mono black, perhaps hoping to be dynamite in this room of rock paper scissors. I'm not actually sure who would be rock paper and scissors in that, but. Uh, Oh well. I'm pretty sure blue white delver is still gotta be rock. Right. Blue white nothing beats rock. And uh, green red, red aggro green and green red aggro and then Niapod. And Niapod are both like when most people would say like red green aggro and Niapod are like 55 45 favorites, right? At low elo? I guess he uh, I Maybe guess Maybe not, I don't know. I know the people, pod people certainly think the, they win. The pod people I think have when I've been watching, have been crushing the red green aggro people. But I don't know which one of them beats the 
which one theoretically beats Delver. I thought that they both are supposed to, but then they lose to all the things. I've heard those claims. <laughs> I have yeah, not seen it very much. There are a few decks that were supposed to be beaten by as many people as Delver. Yeah. I'll tell you what beats Delver. Grixis. <laughs> You know, actually, yes. one of my favorite things that you said at any uh, any point is, what's the, wow. what, what is, uh, what's so great about beating, I want to say Cobblade is what you said, what's so great about beating Cobblade 65% of the time? The mirror is 70-30. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know if the Delver is quite as skill testing the mirror as uh, Cobblade was, but Cobblade was also weird because depending on what where people were used to playing it, some people thought the matchup was totally luck based. Other people thought it was super super skill based because it was one of those matchups that like at a seventeen hundred elo, uh, but, you know, two seventeen like a seventeen hundred versus seventeen fifty, it might be totally lopsided in favor of the seventeen fifty versus uh, you know a twenty. 50 versus a 2100, it could be a coin flip. For those of you who are newer to Magic and uh, don't know what these numbers are that Patrick's talking about, there used to be a little thing called the ELO rating system where you could roughly gauge a player's skill based on this chess-based rating system. And it was not very accurate, but the thing is... No, 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 no. It ELO is, is perfectly accurate. Uh, <laughs> the Magic implementation of it was what was inaccurate. <laughs> ELO is by definition accurate. So going onwards though, <laughs> there is a total utility to exactly what Patrick's saying here because different matchups do make different things happen at different levels of the game. We see a duress here from James Gerbic on Matt Costa. Oh god, what do you take here? Do you take that Pike? Do you take that Celestial Purge? In the dark I take Ponder and I have Ponder? no idea what's in James' hand. Well, Matt has not, as of yet, shown... Um, how do is you that, not? It's got to be, be Ponder. Ponder. He doesn't he, have only a land. one land. Only one land. It's got to be yeah. Besides, Ponder's the only restricted card in his hand. Is it banned in any formats? Yeah, it's Ponder. a banned card. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You can't do. Take Ponder. Let's go. Send him a message. Tell him you're serious. Oh, like, he already knows. I'm he's mono serious. black. Proud of it. Take your Ponder. Your turn. And away it goes. Open to strand Matt Costa on one land only. Yes, takes the ponder. I, and, and he may have been respecting the pike. Just be, I mean, pike is a tough card for him. What you got, James Gerbic? Both players revealing things. Tragic slip, Liliana. Oh, is that a one land hand of his own? Uh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. I, so it looks like he mulliganed. Yeah, he mulliganed. Helps explain how we got to this spot, but this is... Uh, and another Gitaxian probe. So it draws another shock for James. He's, I think, does he have a scour in hand? Yeah, he does. He does. So he's got two more cantrips coming. Oh! Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, do you scour in response just to try to find the land? Yes. Next question. Just quest. Just asking. What Matt is it? No! no! Take the thought scour! Take the scour. Jack this guy! You can't get away with that in this league. Yes! <laughs> Punish him! Mono black him! Yes! It's a shame that there isn't Cabal Therapy. Oh man. Oh my god. I, oh, I don't know. If there was Cabal Therapy, I think we'd be seeing some more of those. Uh, I will sacrifice my Dross Messenger to Cabal Therapy. Grave Crawler. I'm going. I'm going to sacrifice Grave Crawler. I'm going to name Restoration Angel this time. You look like the type. <laughs> Are you emulating anyone? <laughs> oh, Doctor. And what do you have? Same as before. Oh, what do you know? That's weird. Well, and, oh boy, wow. look Pretty at land. this. So there's Rune Changer's Pike, and there's that. And uh, Matt Costa running 20 land, count him. 20 land is so much when you have 12 cantrips. He can't possibly have 12 cantrips, does he? All right, good, 11, he only has 11. 11 okay, cantrips. That makes 20 land is so many. Which strikes me as he had 12 cantrips, 19 lands, and he was like, this is not quite right. Not quite right. One more land, one less cantrip. How could he possibly have played it up? Oh, wait. He plays a lot of Delver. He does. So this is where James needs to draw land and Liliana real quick-like. I mean, is land he on Liliana? like a two-turn Land block? Liliana? Yes. Boom! Mono black, ya brah. 
And that, there goes the two-turn clock. It's become a little bit bigger of a clock. So she said. I think I see Vapor Snag, Celestial Purge, Restoration Angel, and... O-Ring. It's interesting. What do you think about O-Ringing Liliana here instead of purging? Seems like the O-Ring might have other applications, like hitting a last ride. Is Matt trying to be mana efficient? Awesome. I mean, that might be his rationale. Personally, I think mana efficiency is overrated. And here's the Nighthawk. Rewarding him for this line, as now he can purge the Nighthawk and then Vapor Snag the next card. Does he have a Nighthawk? Or what's his? Is it Geistesane Trap? Is that his new card? I could not make it out. Looks like a Geistesane Trap. There it is. You are correct, sir. Wow. And now James does know that Matt Costa has Celestial Purge in hand. In for two. No fear. I guess no value in really being afraid. Verdict. That's generally categorically true. Wow. That's awesome. So uh, James Gerbeck is out here grinding. Oh, we see the fourth mana. Vapor Snag, Celestial Purge, Angel, that's and it. that's Those it. Those are three cards. This is a good match. For, uh, for a couple of guys stuck on one land, this is a good match. And there's the Purge. Get out of here. Out of my game! And James Gerbic says go. I believe he has a Doomblade and friends in hand. Doomblade, Mutilate, and I don't know what else. Is this where we see Snapcaster Mage Ponder? Oh no, it's a Thought Scour, not a Ponder. Or a, a, not a Delver, Snapcaster. Delver get buried. Getting him a Snapcaster. Right. How lucky. There you go. You main phase this, right? I don't. Really? Okay, fair enough. If you're going to get the ponder, for sure. I'm gonna, I would ponder but the, here. But see, one of the things you could do, if he thinks there's a chance that James is going to tap out, all right, he does and he's going to ponder. James I, might have a surgical extraction. It is possible. It's like Kevin Garnett. Anything is oh, possible. tragic slip before the... Uh, are we going to see the Vapor Snag? Dude, I would snag there. Why not? I would snag too. I'd snag so fast. And there's the Ponder. Snag, land, snag. I wouldn't snag those. Those, those can go away. So, nice little match here. Gerbeck with a sizable life advantage over Costa. However, Costa with a Rune Chanter Spike, meaning every single creature is potentially lethal in three hits. James with no real graveyard attack other than surgical extraction. So that Pike is actually really, really scary. He can't reset it. He just has to deal with it. He's got one Karn to deal with it. Two Ratchet Bombs. I board in Ratchet Bomb here. It's so good against O-Ring and against Geysas and Traff as a backup plan and against uh, Delver Flipped. There's a Lash Rive. Dissipate, Restoration Angel, Vapor Snag. We're gonna see a Dissipate here, for sure. Boom, Dissipate. Take that, Lash Rive. Get out of here. Out of my game. Lash Rive is an awesome card. Okay, untap. Untapu, upkipu. Draw. All of the swamps. You can see a Zendikar style pyramid. James Gerbic. Sign and Blood. God, love that it. card is so good. I love Sign and Blood. What do you think about that Wild Guess? Less excited about Wild Guess. Dude. I read this this article about the philosophy of fire. <laughs> Discarding a card versus two life, it's the same thing, brah. Brah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you to Mike Flores for the heavy shout out in that article. <laughs> yeah, just recently. Flores was talking about that. One of uh one of your real big contributions, the uh, the the opening up of of 
of damage, like conversion of resources, like life total and uh, and cards and life total and tempo. The the realization that there is a trinity, not a duality. Yep. We've got a snapcaster from Matt Costa. There's a lot of cards in that graveyard. I wonder how big that pike is. And he big scours enough. himself. EOT. And goodbye, Moreland Hunt. That was a sad loss for Matt Costa there. Ah, uh, they could have been the bottom cards of his deck. Being superstitious is... I'm just saying it was unfortunate that it flipped. Not that it was uh, anything other than a lucky or unlucky thing. Doomblade. Nope. All right, go for the throw. My bad. Snapcaster Mage, despite being a cybernetic guy... He does have a throat. So we're getting dangerously close to the spot of the game where uh, Costa can use Restoration Angel to protect a Snapcaster Mage. Costa looks like he's just going to keep two for one in Gerbic until eventually a creature lives. Oh, Blade Splicer. Just throws this down, figures, hey, well, we're just hanging out. Let me give you something to keep you busy. I mean, Snapcaster, sorry, uh, Blade Splicer has two creatures versus a deck that largely goes one for one. It's gonna have to draw out a Mutilate or James is gonna be uh, even further eked out of cards that matter. See, it's times like this where you just, you're like, man, why isn't uh, my mono black deck, why don't I have like something to close it out, you know? Like he's got a couple worm coils in his deck, but if he doesn't have that Disciple of Volos combo to draw enough cards to get ahead, He's got so many one for ones. He eventually can just succumb to the to the uh, two for one with Snapcaster Mage, two for one with Restoration Angel, yeah. two for one with Blade Splicer, and then eventually one of these pieces of equipment that he can't get rid of finishes him off. And the thing also about the Disciple, that that Disciple getting some card draw requires usually, if it's going to be a significant amount, a Lash Rife in play, and Vapor Snag is very good at stopping that moment from happening. You cast the disciple, and they go, "Well, let's bounce your token in response." So here's a question for you: What if, uh, what if, what if a mono black deck? What if they had four woodland cemeteries, four evolving wilds, and a forest? And then they had Thrag Tusk, Crushing Vines. Like Thrag Tusk. Now that's a guy you want to sacrifice to your disciple of Bolas. That guy's okay. The life gain, awesome. He's a nice finisher. Crushing Vines would help so much for these artifacts. Mutilate, as we uh, were talking about before. Mutilate's still good. If you have four woodland cemeteries, that's not even that much. We were talking about this with Brad uh, Nelson earlier, and I'm with you, um, Patrick. I, I think that you don't need to maximize your value for it to be a good card. There's a lot of kinds of value in this world, you know? Like, you, you know, moderation in all things anyway, but like, sometimes if you're getting enough value from it. All right, Snapcaster, Snapcaster EOT. Yet another removal spell. Edict. Okay. Minus one life. Now, Matt Costa's life actually is getting down there. He's getting close to one hit away from being killed by a Lash Rife should James Gerber, or sorry, Gerbic, find one of his three Lash Rives. Two left, I suppose. And Matt untaps. He's got another Snapcaster. Good God. Well, that's the thing. Snapcasters... Restoration Angels, all these cards, it's like Ponder begets more Ponders. And Snapcaster. Let me see, you get Haxian Probe so you can yep. keep the mana? He might even pay two life here. Oh, for sure he will. If he doesn't have a land in his hand. His life is getting, it's just, it's just starting to get e low. E-Rail. Matt Costa is not scared. Never scared. Never, never, ever scared. Pays the one. Oh, boo. Somebody, I can't believe he's scared. Uh, oh, there's the Disciple and there's a Batter Skull. Not a good hand for the situation, actually. Not a bad combo. Great combo, but Matt Costa has enough, uh, with Mana Leak, can stop James Gerbic from being able to use that so Batter Skull. So he needs skull. a top deck of land here so that he can pay for the yep. Batter Skull. Does he have it? He does. he does! This is gonna be exciting. This makes it much better. Is there a Vapor Snag still in uh, Matt Costa's hand? I hope not. Just a Restoration Angel.
and we have a germ. So James Gerbic, with a batter skull, man at a pay if Costa tries anything fishy. He's got just a disciple in his hand. It'd be nice to be able to draw some extra cards. He's got a sizable life total advantage. Unfortunately for him, Costa is threatening to kill him. With this, uh, is the pike on the snapcaster here? Is this lethal? If he finds a way, like if he finds a snag? Oh, oh there's Celestial the purge. purge on the germ. Is it this is game? black. It's, I mean, if he's got enough instants and sorceries in his graveyard, this might be game. Ponder. Oh, he's thinking about his mana, actually. Time to count. I don't think it's enough. I think it's close, yeah, but it's, not quite. It's, he's got to have, like, what, 10, maybe? This is like a two-turn clock. Yeah, I think it's a two-turn clock. He can, at the end of the turn, if he needs to, Restoration Angel, Snap, get Vapor Snag from the yard, if he needs to. And he's got double Mana Leak, I think. Uh, not sure. Single Mana Leak. This is looking bad for Mono Black Control, though. He's got Snapcaster Dissipate. If Mono Black is gonna... If Mono Black is really going to step up and fulfill the prophecy, people are going to have to start building their Mono Black decks to beat Delver, you know? That has to be, I mean, what happens a lot, I think, is people are like, I know what we should do. We should play this this new control deck I have against your aggro deck. What do you got? Red, green, aggro? Let's do that. Well, that is a good thing to do, but more important is to first sit down against enemy number one, whatever that is, and I, I do think it's Delver. James Gerbic here in a really tight spot. Disciple. Let me read that. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Oh, wow. Angel. Snapcaster comes back into play. Vapor snag. And prepare to die. That's the match. James Matt Costa, Gerbic. Go yeah, ahead. Matt Costa wins 2 0 with Blue White Delver versus James Gerbic with Mono Black Control. Yeah, I think that um, this matchup, unless the Mono Black Control deck finds a very, very specific build that this should usually go very heavily in Delver's favor. Part of the way that Grixis and Blue Black were always able to beat the uh, Delver decks was by just drawing more cards. Having Think Twice in Alchemy or Ravings or any of that, you could just draw enough cards so that you could stay ahead of them. The Mono Black deck, four Sign and Bloods, not enough. He's got Disciple, yeah. but the problem was he could never get going enough to draw any cards off.